Another man who shared some key tenets of Darwin's theory in particular, its implications about God and its implications about man, was Karl Marx, the father of communism. Marx saw also embraced Darwinism as the scientific version of his political philosophy. He saw the struggle as among classes. When you take God out of the equation, whether it is in social Darwinism or in Marxism, all of your attempts to do noble things, and certainly what they had in mind in the Soviet Union was one of the most, was the most ambitious uh, endeavor that mankind has ever tried in terms of social engineering, and it fell flat and cost millions of lives. Because proponents of evolution believed that man was not made in the image of God, they felt free to remove those who got in the way of their social engineering. Karl Marx wrote to his collaborator Frederick Engels in reference to Darwin's On the Origin of Species, this is the book that contains the foundation in natural history for our view. That view, of course, was communism. No one can deny that communism was based upon atheism. The communist leaders explicitly said so. While Karl Marx did not like the Darwinian concept of every man for himself, he found Darwin's theory useful for removing God from the equation and substituting the almighty state as he envisioned it. In communism, the state was God, and literally tens of millions of people have died because of this false belief. Millions of Americans are being lied to. It's a lie hiding as scientific fact. Could you expose the lie of evolution and reveal the truth? <laughs> to help you do that, Coral Ridge Ministries has designed an easy-to-read booklet entitled Evidence for Creation, Intelligent Answers for Open Minds by Tom DeRosa. With this booklet, you'll be equipped to give compelling answers to the most common questions about creation and evolution. Evidence for Creation, Intelligent Answers for Open Minds is yours for a gift to this ministry of any amount. And when you give, we'll also send you today's hard-hitting documentary entitled Darwin's Deadly Legacy, featuring footage not included in this broadcast. DVD includes English and Spanish tracks. We've done all the work for you. We've interviewed the experts, we've compiled the evidence, and presented it in a clear, easy-to-understand format. This video is an excellent resource for anyone you know who's unfamiliar with the little-known dark side of Darwinism and the horrific link between Hitler and evolution. To receive yours, write to Pearl Ridge Ministries, Box 40, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33302, or call 1-888-947-9009. Please call or write today. In his book, Mein Kampf, Adolf Hitler said, the purity of the racial blood should be guarded so that the best types of human beings may be preserved and that thus we should render possible a more noble evolution of humanity itself. Adolf Hitler relied on evolutionary concepts in his chilling treatise, Mein Kampf. What was the real connection between the horrors of Nazism and the theories of Darwin. The following contains some graphic scenes. Parental discretion is advised. Perhaps the most evil figure ever is Adolf Hitler. He and the Nazis committed unspeakable actions, crimes against humanity. What link, if any, is there to the theory of Charles Darwin? Dr. Richard Weikart heads the Department of History at the University of California, Stanislaus, in Turlock, California. He has written the important new book, From Darwin to Hitler. Hitler was taking ideas of Darwinism in a certain kind of direction. An important point of Darwinism uh, was that there is no distinction between humans and animals, at least no qualitative distinction. Darwin, in fact, 
termed it this way, there's a quantitative but not a qualitative distinction between humans and animals. There was also a sea change with the acceptance of Darwin in how humanity was to view human death itself. One of the most uh, important ways that Darwinism revolutionized thinking about morality, especially relating to bioethics and medical ethics, was by introducing a new idea of what death is. The Judeo-Christian conception of death is that death is an enemy uh, that is to be overcome and ultimately will be overcome through Christ. But the Darwinian vision is that death is a positive force that brings progress. And in fact, the more death, the more progress. The more people are born, the more variation you have. This gives more possibilities for good variations. Charles Darwin's theory was not accepted widely at first, but he noticed it began to gain a foothold in Germany some 50 years before Hitler. And so Darwin wrote, the support which I received from Germany is my chief ground for hoping that our views will ultimately prevail. They prevailed in ways unimaginable. To truly understand the atrocities of the Holocaust, one must first understand the major movement which paved the way for it. Charles Darwin had a cousin uh, by the name of Francis Galton, who uh, took the ideas of Darwin and began to apply them to the, to the realm of genetics. Dr. George Grant is the author of many books, including Grand Illusions, The Legacy of Planned Parenthood. Uh, Galton wondered, is there a possible way to actually steer evolution through scientific methods so that we actually create a race of thoroughbreds? Uh, Galton assumed that, uh, that there were certain good genes and certain bad genes in the, the human gene pool. The movement Galton spawned became known as the eugenics movement. The word eugenics literally means good birth. The eugenics movement resulted in restrictions on who could and could not marry, involuntary sterilization, and even forced abortions in many cases. In America, tens of thousands of those deemed unfit were forcibly sterilized by the state. Even the U.S. Supreme Court declared the practice constitutional in 1927, a decision in which Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes, Jr. famously declared, three generations of imbeciles are enough thus clearing the way for a Virginia woman to be sterilized against her will. Eugenics essentially argued that there were certain population centers that were so polluted with bad human genomes that they simply needed to be eliminated. Though it is frequently ignored now, Planned Parenthood is a direct result of the eugenics movement in America. Its founder, Margaret Sanger, believed in removing what she called, quote, the dead weight of human waste, unquote. That's why Margaret Sanger would say uh, things like, our purpose is to raise up a new race of thoroughbreds. She talked about eliminating human weeds. And the eugenics movement of the 19th and 20th centuries had an enormous influence on the policies of Adolf Hitler's Third Reich. I mean, it, it verbal sounds like like Margaret Sanger and today's Planned Parenthood and, and NARAL people when, when Goebbels talks about useless eaters. Well, that's, I mean, it's about the ugliest term I've ever heard, useless eaters, human beings with the spark of the divinity in them. They don't see humans that way. They don't see humans as an engine of creation. They see them as, you know, depriving the earth of resources, useless eaters or unwanted babies. Adolf Hitler was clearly trying to speed evolution along, and he wasn't the only one. He was drawing on what many other scholars, biologists, geneticists in Germany were also uh, preaching uh, and teaching uh, in the early 20th century. 